Good afternoon, everybody, and happy Monday to you. Today is the week of August 23rd, and you are tuned in again for another episode of Mark's Monday Minutes in Real Estate, specific for the Portland, Oregon real estate market. All right, let's begin. The summary for today is that inventory growth has hit the wall. What does that mean? It means that sellers have now realized they do not, if they don't have to sell their house, they're not feeling the need to. As a result, for the fourth week in a row, our inventory levels have started to decline. The new listings coming on have absolutely plummeted. The number of pending listings has gone up to hit that apex, but I suspect it's going to be dropping down as well. Let's get into the numbers and show you what I mean. The number of active listings in the Portland Metro Portland metropolitan area, 4,290. This is down from 4,350, roughly 4,300 and 4,400 the week before that. So they are dropping. What does that mean? Fewer new homes coming to market. Now the number of new homes this week, 559. This is down over 100 from 671 the week before that, 685 the week before that, 614, and then back in July, 733. So again, those numbers of new listings per week have been steadily declining. I think I got my hand gesture correct there. All right, the number of sold homes, 480, up from the week before of 408, but that seemed naturally that will occur as pending homes start to clear off inventory and new homes no longer come on the market, we'll see the overall numbers dropping, which we are. Now, the number of homes, fascinating, the number of homes that they price adjustment right now, Portland's sitting at 31%. Nationally, we're looking at 39%. My suspicion is that these are sellers who rushed their homes to market in May and June, who were trying to beat some, some example of a real estate crash and they may have rushed to market, but also overpriced their home because that's where the trajectory was back in the spring. As a result, buyer demand has pulled back as buyers are being more cautious as, real, as mortgage interest rates have gone up. But sellers also have pulled back and I think being a little more realistic right now. So as a result, we're still well ahead of the curve of national. We don't expect we're going to see 40%. We, we've been at this 31%, 29, 29, 29, 30, 31. So we're still hanging right around that 30 to 31 point. Now, number of sold homes in the last 30 days, 2,056. Why is this important? 2,056 sold homes over a over, measured against an existing number of homes of 4,290 gives us just at 2.08 months of inventory, roughly two months of inventory. That's where we're sitting. We've been sitting at two months of inventory for six weeks in a row. That's why I've been seeing actually seven. Take that back counting this week, that makes seven. Now let's go into the active number of four car garage homes. Obviously the ones many of my clients look for. The number of current active listings with a four car garage or larger, 123. 38 of these are under $1 million. So maybe in the affordable four car garage realm. There are 12 new listings this week, the same as last week with a four car garage. 10 have gone pending with a four car garage or more. Eight have sold in the last week and 40 of which have sold in the last 30 days. So if we sell 40 homes with a four car garage or larger, and we have 123 homes available today, that gives us 3.1 months of inventory for the four car garage homes. Now remember, these are a bit biased because many of them have a are over a million dollars, so the luxury market is definitely taking a bit longer to sell than the conventional home market with two or three car garages. Now. Again, as I wanted to say, we have absolutely hit our summer peak. We usually see that at the end of July. We see the peak of, of new listings in July. We see the peak of pending by the end of August. And what we're seeing right now is normal. Sellers are sitting on a fantastic amount of equity in their home, with significant equity. They have cheap mortgages in the, if the, as most have refied in the two to 3% range, maybe low fours. Current mortgage rates have actually kind of trickled up in the last week. I think we've had a good two week buffer of nice rates in the lower fives. I suspect by the end of this week, we're probably gonna be upwards of upper fives again because the feds are having, we've got lots of, inf of inflation information coming out. Federal Chairman Powell is speaking on Friday in Jackson Hole and the uncertainty is already inching those mortgage rates up. Now, what's gonna happen in 2023? 
if it looks like we have less inventory, that again works against those who are waiting for a crash to snap up deals. Probably not going to happen. And it typically is at least a year out between significant job loss before you start to see an abundance of homes on the market in a normal situation, just as we saw back in 2007, 2008, which was not normal, but the last time that we hit that form of a depression or recession or whatever you wanted to call it, it takes about a year, according to economists, before the housing market reacts to that loss of jobs, loss of economic stability. Right now, we're not seeing an abundance of homes. We're seeing a scarcity of homes. And again, sellers don't have to put their homes in the market. Therefore, they're not going to. So that alone will help sustain rates. Now, how will values go into 23? If we're seeing more homes, we've talked about home values plateauing in 23. But if sellers continue to keep their homes off, we might see, well, from your perspective, we might return to an appreciation, probably not the double digit appreciation of 10, 12, 19% that we've seen in the last few years, but back to a normal four and a half percent over the last 50 year average, that'd be fine with me. All right, that's it this week. I'll draw this to a close. Thanks for tuning in, thanks for watching. If you ever have questions, post down below, send me a message, send me a text. I'll do my best to answer any questions you have, obviously outside this podcast. Stay tuned as well. I have a bonus section that I'm working on, a segment that I'm working on probably in the next week on alternative financing as mortgage rates rise. If you have retirement funds, not in a retirement account, but investments, then you might be able to leverage that, in fact, in lieu of cashing those investments out to purchase a mortgage for a down payment. I'll have more information on that yet to follow. Have a wonderful day. Happy Monday.